We all come from large families known as our family tree. Those ancestors can't know us, but we can try to know them. And that's part of the motivation behind a mission that involves genealogy and a bit of archaeology to learn more about the story of a wagon train to the west. Through satellites, the internet shows us the world, and we can access anywhere from anywhere in an instant. One day, John and his friend Jeff notice something on the planet that jumps out at them, and it's practically right in their own backyard. John Ketting and his friends trek across a cornfield in Eagle Township, Illinois, a hundred miles south of Chicago. What they discover surprises and saddens them. I came around the cornfield. I spotted a stone over the barbed wire fence that runs along here. I found what looks to me like a cemetery, but I still couldn't get in. Graves scattered and shattered many buried in the earth or tossed in the overgrown brush, a hidden cemetery. You couldn't even see a grave from the sky. No reference to nothing. All it was was a spot on the map. Where did it come from? Who are these people? What happened here? The abandoned cemetery lost among weeds says more about the present than it does about the past. I think what really hit us was finding the Civil War stone desecrated. It hurts because you know what they've suffered fighting. Once we've seen that, it's like we have to do something. John Kepman's ancestors owned this land in Eagle Township at one time. His interest in family history inspires him to dig up the past in more ways than one. As we unearth a gravestone, we do the research on it and it becomes a part of us. Yeah. It becomes a part of me because then I know their family history. Yeah. How they came, why they came, and when they came. Let's go find your ancestor. You know, it's just like this is, this is the purpose of me coming here to begin with, was finding this. And the more that I dig into it, the more I want to find out more and why all of this happened. So who is she? My ancestor who came from Ohio, John Coleman, in 1831 on a wagon train, married four different women. They're all here, but I can't find them. A family diary indicates they're buried near the one family stone still standing. Laura Cowgill. If any of the other 19th century markers were wood crosses, they may have deteriorated over time. Simple stones may have been pushed away. This makes it even more difficult to identify who is buried where. John finds out what he can on the internet, but he also has this map from 1874. Need that one, yes. Okay. You go back in time, somebody had to document something somewhere. John believes this makeshift cemetery dates back to the 1830s. Families travel to Illinois by wagon train from Ohio, Virginia, and even Plymouth, Massachusetts. They travel together, live together, and often die together. The top of his stone, we couldn't find it. It was underneath the roots of that tree. Wow. It broke that bad. Time is often unkind to the living, and in this case, it can treat the dead harshly too. Wind, sleet, and perhaps wildlife push grave markers into the ground or behind trees. Digging up stones, putting them back together, you're, you're putting history back together. It's very self-rewarding to do this kind of work. That's the interesting point to me, because many of their descendants either don't know, some don't care, but you care. Why is that? 
because I know what it is for me to find my ancestor, but I have everybody else's. I can, I can reconnect with them through Ancestry.com and tell them we have found your ancestor out here. Set between cornfields, a creek, and what would have been fertile hunting grounds, the cemetery sits upon a plateau guarded by trees and now barbed wire. Among the early pioneers, John finds a Civil War veteran. This is uh, James McCready. And on his, on his grave marker, it's 17th Illinois Infantry. McCready's unit pursues the Swamp Fox, Confederate General Jeff Thompson through Missouri and into Arkansas. Later, McCready serves on the USS Louisville. It was a great honor for James McCready to serve on that ship. This grave marker is from 1791, the area's first mailman, John Fulweiler. Ketman found the man's third great-granddaughter, Irene, in Florida, who also happens to be a postal worker. I think she was blown away by it. I really do. To think that someone else that she didn't know from Adam is fixing up her ancestors' graves and doing it right. Sometimes a name and date are all that's left of one's life story. We don't know why and how yet, but we found this baby buried here. And it's just a little dinky marker. And can you see the name on there? Is it just Yeah, faded? actually, you can, if you've cleaned this, you can actually see it says Willie across the top. Willie Newland, age one. Life in the 19th century was hard and unforgiving. Even this small graveyard reflects that. One man was killed in a mining accident, then his son died in an accidental shooting. One family died of disease by eating a pig infected with a parasite. Restoring a cemetery isn't just a landscaping job. The wrong cleansers can ruin stones and erase names that have withstood the elements for a century. John and his partner Jeff discover you actually need a permit. Jeff and I were digging up gravestones at $2,000 fines a piece. We had like 10 of them already. And it's like, Jeff, we're gonna go to jail. They take classes and begin the restoration, but that's just part of the problem. Burial records are often unofficial and incomplete. He asks engineers from the University of Illinois to use ground penetrating radar to help locate bodies. Now volunteers plunge rods into the soil to detect buried gravestones. Volunteers have become friends, like Jane Berry, who has scrubbed for hours. Most of the families of these people are gone. There's nobody to say their names out loud. There's nobody to take care of their graves. Um, I feel bad. I feel bad for the people that are buried here because, you know, nobody remembers them. So everybody should be remembered. Elizabeth Blackwell's father served at Valley Forge. Elizabeth and husband Samuel both died December 22nd, 1855. John says the records show it's the same time a blizzard hit the area. I feel that this story needs to be told. People today need to know what they've got. They don't know what it's like to have three and four and five family members die in a week where these people had to fight and do whatever it was to survive. After six years of research and landscaping, John's friend Jeff passes away of cancer in 2018. But their work continues to discover a lost generation, restore their resting place, and reveal the story the best they can to see how it connects to the future. It's become a passion with me. It's almost like a high it's an endless puzzle. There's no end to it. You can keep going back further and further and further. You might meet that cousin that you never heard of before. The John Coleman had a brother, Samuel, 
and someone from Streeter is a descendant from Samuel. She's a distant DNA cousin of mine that I grew up with and never knew it. And what graveyard would be complete without a gate? John made this from the headboard of an old wrought iron bed. So I had this big wrought iron day bed. We had it strapped to the top of the SUV. What are your thoughts about how it came out? Absolutely stunning. If I was to add to it, which I think I'm going to do, maybe a wagon wheel on each side because their journey, they're here in the land of Eagle. You know, they made it. John and his new friends keep coming back to clear weeds and dig for more answers and add other finishing touches. Perched above the barbed wire and wildflowers, a series of birdhouses and a park bench sits under a giant oak with a message of John's mission. First to the journey in the land of the eagle, through time we were forgotten, unearthed again, reunited in progeny. He's not just restoring gravestones, he's resurrecting a story to demonstrate that lives are more than signatures in a ledger. Centuries ago, the journey to Eagle Township for these people is about opportunity and perseverance. And now the story of this cemetery is about dignity, how the living value their ancestors' struggle to keep the family tree growing for generations to come. For more on this backstory, check out WGNTV.com slash backstory. Coming up, Donut Day. It's not just a modern commercial promotion. Its meaning goes back to a World War I mission. Also a championship game that makes history.